guys, how is it going? As titled in this video, I will give you a detailed review on Crown Princess Margarita. The purpose of my videos, if you haven't noticed yet, more than just to show off my passion is to help you decide if it's the right plant or rose for you. I am not an expert, but I can only help you through my personal experiences growing these plants. I am a Pacific Northwest where climate is pretty similar to UK, London, England. So I've heard where these English roses grown and first tried on. So let me show you a quick update as to what's going on here at my patio at the back of my house. This is uh, Princess Alexandra of Kent, you guys. The blooms are just ginormous. Look at that. And I got so many, so many. I, I kind of feel like I really have to tell you my feeding. I have one big secret of what kind of fish fertilizer I give. It's uh, something that I haven't really talked about. So uh, watch out for my next video. I don't know what to say beautiful yay okay so here we go first let me just say this I think it is arrogant and ignorant at the same time when a youtuber recommends a rose just because he or she likes it or how a certain rose performs in his or her garden without considering zone fragrance and rose bloom formation personal preferences you know English roses specially performs better in cooler temperature climates. So if you are in Arizona, California, Louisiana, hot climates, well, pack some courage, patience, and the virtue of content for whatever the result it might bring you. Well, all right, Crown Princess Margarita. I have this rose for about three years now since i planted it as a potted own root specimen a really lovely rose with its 120 compact beautifully arranged rosette petals the bloom color opens to be orange apricot then gradually changes to a creamy yellow as it gets warmer then ending with blotches of pink which make it look like a dirt rag <laughs> i don't care if its blooms look on its last stage but it is time to snip it off by then its coloration varies in climate i think this rose favors cooler climate which is very common with english roses in the fall its color changes to pink apricot despite planting it close to arbovitae which probably competing with roots, this rose appears to be very healthy. Seem like a short, nice climber, about six feet right now. With tame canes that could easily be trained the way you want to design it, it does respond to pegging, creating nice laterals, which means uh, the capability of giving more blooms hopefully it is disease resistant but thrips distorted some of its early soft buds this time so what's the con despite its big healthy thick canes this rose is not a reliable rebloomer for me she gets a good lovely first flush then will bloom here and there after stingy so this bush should stay in the background while not in bloom, serving as a hedge. It has a medium strong tea rose smell, fruity. It does attract bees and butterflies, yes. If this rose dies on me, to be honest, I would replace it with something else, something that is a real bloom show stopper. For now, she got a space and let's see how she behaves next year. 
So do I recommend this rose? I've heard mixed reviews. Others say it's a non-stop bloomer for them while the other half of us complain. So do you like how she looked? Her color? Do you prefer scented roses? Maybe you should try her then. Lovely dramatic rose in my space, giving a ribbon effect in the middle of evergreen as she is the first one to open and bless me and the bees in the early spring. Do you have this rose? Drop your comment below. Tell me your experience with this princess. I am interested to hear your rose story. Have a great, wonderful day.